Hi, I'm Nick at Avro Disc Golf, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made my first disc, which I think turned out pretty cool looking. Then I'm going to take it out into a field and show you how it flies, but first I want to show you how I designed the disc. I sketched the design in a 3D modeling software called Fusion 360. I based the shape off of my favorite mid-range disc, but I didn't spend that much time on it because I'm mostly using it to make sure the injection molding machine I built is working properly. Next, I designed the mold, which is essentially a negative of the disc. There are two halves to the mold, and together they form the cavity that I'll inject the plastic into. For this first disc, I decided to make the mold out of wood. A wood mold won't last very long, but it should be good enough to make a couple of discs, and that's all I'm really looking for at this point. Here's the finished mold. Unfortunately, the very last cut of the program messed up and created this massive gouge, so I had to fill it in with some wood and epoxy. I also used epoxy to fill any pores in the wood, and sanded it down and sprayed it with some silicon mold release, which should prevent the plastic from sticking to the mold. Now that the mold's done, it's time to make a disc. The first step is to weigh out the plastic and then pour it into the machine to let it heat up. Well, I ran into a bit of a problem here. The barrel's completely full of plastic and I still need to fit a little bit more in there. I realize now that there's some air sitting between the plastic pellets before they melt and this takes up space. I forgot to account for this when I sized the barrel. So as a workaround, I let the plastic melt in the barrel for a few minutes and then I pushed all the air out of it. This gave me just enough room to fit the rest of the plastic in. It takes at least 20 minutes for the plastic to melt, so in the meantime, I preheat the mold a little bit with my hairdryer. Now that everything's hot, it's time to thread the mold on the bottom of the barrel and press the plastic into it. The plastic is pretty thick and viscous, so it takes my full body weight to push it into the mold. You can see my feet leaving the ground. After letting the mold cool for a few minutes, it's time to take it apart and see how the disc turned out. Well, the bottom of the disc has some voids in it. I'm not really sure what happened here. Maybe I didn't use enough plastic or the mold was too thick, but overall, I'm pretty happy with this disc. And it weighs 172 grams, which is the perfect weight for a disc. But there's still one final test we need to do. I was pleasantly surprised at how well it flies. It's pretty neutral flying, but I would say it's slightly understable. It seems to hold whatever line I put it on quite well. But there are a couple issues with this disc compared to one you buy off the shelf. I was using polypropylene, which doesn't have a very high density. So in order to get it the right weight, I had to make the flight plate really thick. And this also caused the disc to be quite stiff. For my next disc, I'll choose a different type of plastic, which should fix both of these problems. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more. And as always, nothing in this video is engineering advice.